Hello and welcome back. Um, so in the first part of our uh, focusing in um, video, uh, we kind of started looking at what is inside of a generic microcontroller. And we lost, last talked about the system bus and some kind of properties about the bus. So we're going to continue that discussion and then kind of look at what else you're going to find in, you know, maybe a microcontroller. Um, so continuing on with the system bus is that all components inside of a microcontroller appear in an address range on the bus. So what that means is everything that's on the bus has an address or a large range of addresses. And the analogy I gave before was maybe, you know, a city where every house has to have an address to get information to each house. But you might also have a uh, larger building, say commercial office building that might have a hundred little addresses inside of it. Um, so Whenever you look at a microcontroller system, there exists what's called a memory map. Um, you know, I'll write it, memory map. And all a memory map is, is a way of numerically indicating which addresses different, uh, different pieces of logic or different stuff uh, where it kind of exists. So for example, you know, if we have 64 kilobytes of flash, um, we might put it at address of 0 to FFFF, 65,535. Um, the RAM might exist right above that, at starting at 65,536, you know, going to, you know, 128K. Um, now, not all devices will use that much space. Uh, memory tends to use a large amount of space. Um, but everything on that bus has to have an address. And that's how the CPU or core knows how to get... Um, knows how to talk uh, to, to the different devices. And one of the key things that, uh, if you can wrap your head around, is that everything on the microcontroller to the CPU, uh, it just looks like memory. Whether it's memory or not, it's going to look like it. It just has an address in the bus, and you read and write data. Um, so now I'm going to show, we, we kind of looked at the kind of, key parts here, you know, this flash, you know, the RAM, you know, and the CPU, but we have, we have other stuff, you know, inside a microcontroller. And this is what really makes a microcontroller a microcontroller is that you have more than a CPU. You have other, other cool stuff. So the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, GPIO. Um, so yeah, call it the good stuff. Um, so GPIO is, it's kind of a rudimentary peripheral. Um, and it's so rudimentary, uh, often data sheets don't even talk about the GPIO uh, in particular, but all of the GPIO is a way of mapping memory addresses and bits inside registers or memory locations to physical pins. So you might have a group of eight you know, pins that map to a certain memory location where if bits go high or low in that memory location, the physical pin will go high or low. Um, so you could write to address 1000 and address 1000 might map to eight pins. You can toggle these pins. Likewise, GPIO can kind of go the other way. You might have pins that if you read the memory location, you can assess the state of those pins. Um, and that's a pretty fundamental operation for a microcontroller. All microcontrollers have this and have this functionality. And it what makes it such a useful piece of glue. We discussed glue before as it ties things together. Um, that's what's really important. And so to control I.O., you control memory. So... Um, each peripheral is memory mapped. So it's easy to think about, okay, RAM. If you have 65K of RAM, you need each byte needs its own address. But hardware also appears as memory. I gave you the example of GPIO is that we have bits and, you know, single uh, digits in each one of those memory locations tying to pins. But 
we can have more complex peripherals such as the serial port and it may use for example 20 hex um you know uh, it may have 16, 32, 64, however many locations to control the peripheral. Um, and in a future video, we're going to really dive in and look at how that kind of works. But what I want you to take away from here is that hardware just like, looks like memory as well. And if you can simply manipulate this memory, you can manipulate the hardware. And so all of these peripherals, you know, simply get pinned out meaning you have different signals so for example the analog digital converter has certain pins that route uh, you know to the internal unit to the physical pin you know and controlling it is as simple as reading or writing a memory location now all these functions are exposed onto these MCU pins and this is where you got to look at the you know data sheet the data sheet will tell you, you know, which pins, there may be certain pins on this device. For example, here it might be power, but this might be, you know, port A, you know, you know, bit one. And that might be tied into the GPI unit, GPIO unit. But that's what you got to look in the data sheet for. Now, here's the tricky case is that because these microcontrollers have so many different functions built in, you couldn't put enough pins on a device to get all of the functions. And in most cases, almost all microcontrollers now, the functions are multiplexed. What that means is, is that you have GPIO going to and from the pins, but you may also have UART signals go to those same pins and so what you have to do is there's often a port multiplexer that sits by the pins that controls what get routed to the pin so the user you know through code meaning you know there's executable code that controls a mux peripheral that'll kind of control do i want the uart at the pin or do i want the gpio at the pin uh, and that's up for the user to decide. Um, so when you design your system, you got to think about that. Um, what functions do you want, and can I get can I get to the pin? Because one thing that's often the case is that there's a lot of peripherals, but that UART might share, for example, the same pins as the SPI. And even if you arrange the multiplexer, let's say you wanted both, you might not be able to get both depending on the pin you choose. Um, so it's important to look through the data sheet and vendors have tools that'll help you with this. Um, but you gotta think about your system, but often it's more than just programming the, the, the hardware. You gotta about think about how do you get, you know, you know, what's in a peripheral, you know, to a pin. So the multiplexer, is usually another peripheral you know I'm just gonna draw it by the pin you know it's attached to the bus that you program and it's a simple set of registers where you set bits and you look in the reference manual that tells you write this value to get GPIO or write this value to get a timer or this value to get a UART so on and so forth um, so uh, how do we set up peripherals in the MUX? So we're going to take a look at that in a future video of just how you do that. And that often is, you know, operation that's probably, once you get it, it it's really simple. But if you're just starting out, uh, it, it seems a little bit overwhelming. But we're going to go through all that and kind of demystify it because it's not as hard as you think. So the most important thing is once you kind of understand that this is what a microcontroller is, I don't care who makes it, you know, what features they advertise are in it, all microcontrollers work this way. You have a core, a bus, and then memory and peripherals. And the way you select uh, a microcontroller is as simple as deciding, well, what peripherals do you need for your system, how much memory, um, and then picking the device. 
Um, but to really program these devices, you really got to read the data sheet in the reference manual because that's where the good stuff's at. The reference manual will explain what the, where the registers are, um, you know, which, you know, how you set up the time or how you set up the UART. Uh, so even if you don't have a software library to do it for you, you read that reference manual, you can program anything. So what I want you to leave um, here with is one important fact. All microcontrollers, all MCUs fundamentally do the same thing. You read and write I.O., you, you, you talk to these peripherals, and you glue stuff together with this, with this kind of magical chip. Um, so the, how do you choose one? Um, and that, that's, that can be a difficult choice. And everyone kind of has their own algorithm, but there's a lot of factors. The first one, does it have enough I.O.? Um, if you need 30 I.O. and the chip has 20, you're in trouble. Um, does it have the right blend of peripherals? This is often a big point here because one thing that's happened over the uh, past several years is that most vendors, um, the way that they've been distinguishing themselves from other vendors isn't necessarily their core. They may use the same core, for example, an ARM Cortex core, but they'll choose different peripherals or implement a peripheral better or have higher quality ADCs, and that's the way they differentiate themselves. Um, the device package is very important, um, meaning is it a dip if you're old school, you know, is it a BGA, um, which is more difficult to solder? Um, you may select because you might not be able to work with a BGA. You might have to go to something with leads, something like a quad flat pack. Um, development tools. You know, you have to be able to write code for the device. So the the availability of inexpensive, easy to use development tools, you know, is is very very important. Um, CPU core type and speed is important. Um, it's becoming, I'm not going to say, I shouldn't say less important. Um, but you know, it is a factor that you need to be able to do the computations you need to do in real time, but that's not your only factor. Depending on the peripherals you choose, you might have enough peripherals that can automate processes where you don't need necessarily the fastest CPU and you might not want the fastest CPU. You might want something slower. Um, because the faster something runs, typically the more power it uses. Um, a good one is what do you already know? If you already know a certain microcontroller and you know the development tools, you might want to choose that one. It might not be the best fit, but it's the one that will get you market quickest. Um, power consumption, if it's battery powered, you can't put a processor that ha you know consumes 3 watts. You might need microwatts when in a sleep mode. Of course, memory is important. Oftentimes, when you choose a microcontroller when you're developing, you may choose a certain family, um, and then that family may be the same except that has different memory sizes, where you'll choose, you know, a large memory size to development, but then once you've got your program figured out, you select a cheaper model that has less memory. Um, community support this is a big one. Uh, most uh, companies worth their weight, um, you know, uh, worth their salt is has community forums where users can go and talk to each other and they have text going to those forums. Nine times out of ten, this is where you find, you know, support. That's a big deal. Um, design examples. Code is... Um, you know, code can be difficult and you could spend a lot of time writing your own code to program hardware. So you want good examples. Uh, price is important um, for, for volume, but sometimes price might take a backseat to some of these other parameters because you might have a, you might have something that's expensive uh, to begin with, but you want to get it to market quicker. Uh, ease of use. You don't want something that's hard to use, of course. Device maturity. Big one. Uh, do you want to use the part that just came out two months ago, or do you want to select something that's been around for five or ten years, or that's guaranteed to have some longevity? You know, and lastly, uh, we engineers tend to get hung up on this, but fastest is not always the best. CPU speed is not the only measure, you know, the core speed of how fast you can do an operation. 
um, oftentimes you just might want the CPU to move data on the peripherals and let the peripherals do the work. Um, so that's kind of the last thing I want to leave you with. But uh, so I, I, I hope this kind of gets you a better understanding of what a microcontroller is and what's inside of a microcontroller. And that once you get get this idea that they're all kind of the same, they just have a different blend of peripherals, uh, maybe a little faster, slower, but they all do the same thing. Um, that they're really not that scary. That you can, once you learn, say, one platform, it's pretty easy to move to any other because the design tools are usually similar. Um, you know, it's kind of like a Coke Pepsi argument. So um, I hope you learned a lot in this video, and uh, I'll see you again soon in the next uh, next series.